understand. Um, and I just want to use this to kind of frame some introductory remarks and not necessarily um, doesn't need to carry us through the entire conversation. Um, we, we can kind of jump to wherever, wherever we want. Um, one of the first, I think, really critical points is this notion of silence, silences. And also, I'm, I'm a mover, so I hope that doesn't like mess with nobody down here. Um, silences, silences. Um, it's important for us to understand, and, and, and Rodman uh, talks about this uh, most explicitly, any time we have a, uh, any story that's being told, any story, any, any narrative stream, it could be the content that's coming out in our rap music, it could be how rap music is being writ written about, it could be how race is being talked about or written about. It could be years down the line when all y'all are famous and I'm sitting back reading y'all biographies and autobiographies, right? These are stories that are being told. All of these stories are making deliberate decisions about what information to include and what information to leave out, right? These are choices made about what is a part of the narrative stream and what kind of gets pushed to the margins. This might be familiar to, to some of you already. And just also, if there's any uh, kind of questions or comments, um, just, just feel free to, uh, to, to just throw your hands up in the air. I'm also going to put a few frames on, on, on this side of the board um, that I'm not necessarily going to uh, talk about in the introductory comments, but I want to make sure that, that we get to them uh, when we open up discussion, um, if we can. So this thing about silence. Part of what it means to be uh, a critical student, critical listener, critical thinker, is to be in this place of consistently asking ourselves the question, as we're evaluating this narrative stream, what are the assumptions here that are allowing these claims to be made possible? All right, talking about Eminem specifically. For instance, what assumptions are being made about Eminem, about the music that he's producing, about his status as a rapper, what assumptions are being made about the quality of product that he's able to produce in order for the conditions of critics saying, well, this guy's music is just corrupting the minds of these young people. What, what, what assumptions are being made there that allow room for these types of claims, or these types of uh, critiques to be uh, waged against that? Want to kind of move 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 quickly uh, on on this next point. Another thing I want to and just kind of kind of bookmark that piece about uh, about silences. Another thing that that I think is important for us to make sure that we consider as we're going through these readings is a topic that is not unfamiliar to the discussion that we've been having. Um, and that is authenticity. But in these readings, we encounter authenticity in a bit of a different way than we've encountered it uh, in, in the past, right? So we, we've, we've discussed thus far, um, you know, what, what is it that makes, you know, something, somebody black enough, you know, is, he, is, 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 is music, you know, Black enough? Is it black male enough? And we and we know these conversations are not restricted uh, uh, to hip hop, of course. I mean, this this, this is a broader uh, uh, cultural and societal conversation. I mean, black folks were asking, "Is he black enough?" to Obama four years ago, and then Michael Eric Dyson had to step in and say, "Was he black enough?" I mean, you can't mistake his wife for nothing but a sister, right? These, these conversations are consistently happening. Um, but in in the text, specifically. Um, and this, this, this carries over into the, um, into the White Like Me piece, but specifically in the Rodman text, we see a bit of a deeper kind of understanding of authenticity in terms of the work that it does beyond us asking the question, you know, is somebody, whatever the modifier is, enough, right? So one of the workings that we see of authenticity or asking these questions of authenticity is on, 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 on one level, we talked about this before, on one level it continues to uh, re-inscribe these, these essential categories, right? Um, but more of the, the, the subtle working here is that we see authenticity from, from the other side in terms of 
of the criticism coming from the white imaginary waged against Eminem in terms of well, why are you why are you rapping like that? You know, why 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 are you including um, vulgar lyrics? You know, in, in your songs. I mean, these 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 explicitly violent and misogynistic. I mean, these are these are essentially questions that help raise the broader issue of why is your uh, music not white enough? And you all can feel free again to, to, uh, uh, to raise questions or concerns at, at any time, um, disagreements, uh, or, or, or what have you. Part of the work that I think is important to understand in all of these conversations is that any time we see discourses and discussions about what it means to embody something specifically uh, a racial body authentically, they are infused with uh, a, a subliminal language that reinscribes racist narratives and stereotypes. Right. In the second presentation, um, um, 